So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We need the motion that this house would no longer conduct a plebiscite in the island that will consider it automatically part of the Bank Samara government. But before proceeding further, let me first cite or, or explain to you what is the problem or the issue of this debate. So the issue in this debate is about why should there be a plebiscite conducted, what is the importance of this plebiscite, and why should why should there, um, coming from the government side, we, we highly agree that there should no longer be a plebiscite conducted because of such because of such reasons I will be explaining later on. But before that, let me first give you my mechanics on how we would on how on what the government will do if there would no longer be a plebiscite in this situation. Firstly, since there would no longer be a plebiscite done, the government side proposes to let the central government or the three branches of the central government together with the OPAP and the MILF to, to have to take over or to scoot, or to scrutinize or to segregate, segregate these significant people who are part of the are, who are part of the armed government, these experienced people who, who are qualified to be at the part of the Bank Samara system, these people who who are um, who who are who are recommended by the central government that would be responsible enough to handle the bank scenario system. So how will this process be done, if you may ask? So to, to have a smooth flow of, of the appointing, to make sure that the bank scenario government would be a, a, um, a, a successful government, the government said proposes that from the, coming from the armed government itself, the central government will have a background checking or they would, they would conduct this um, conduct this checking on what on on, the, on what services they have given the earth, on what developments have contributed to the arm system, on what on what are the what significance they have given the to the arm system on or what have you. So in this in this case we are not neglecting the fact of democracy, but what we are trying to do is to make is to maximize the use of that democracy since the Bank Samara system will now be will now have both fiscal and a, and, a, and an auto and a political will have both fiscal and political autonomy. So that is why the government side proposes that we let the central government take over the appointing of of the new Bank Samara system. Second, secondly, um, we, we, we do not deny or we do not deny the fact or we do not deny the process of having a plebiscite. But what the government side is trying to say to you is that at the first at the first later part, latter parts of the system, since a plebiscite would take time, would take a long process, or would take lots of efforts and time, and having the bank Samoa having the bank Samoa as a developing country. Now that would be a hindrance or that would give them a hindrance to make the development of the bank Samoa slower. So that is why we, we propose to let the central government who people who are eligible enough to recommend the right kind of people to put them in the bank Samoa system. So um, if if ever that that the bank the, the, the latest bank Samoa system would fail, that is now the time that the ple that a plebiscite will be conducted to, to ensure that um that a plebiscite will be conducted um to hear out the voice of the people. But then again, what if um we conduct this plebiscite before we proceed to the bank Samoa system? What if the people who choose the wrong people? What if the people who choose the wrong people to govern the Bank Samoa, what if they have made the mistake or what if the people they have chosen would, 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 not, would not cater to needs of the Bank Samoa? So that, so that, now, that then now leads to my, to my first argument. What if the plebiscite conducted will be a failure? What would happen and what would benefit the time and effort the end of the time, energy, and the funds that were taken up to conduct this plebiscite. Now, what if the people have chosen the wrong kind of people to govern the Bank Samoa government? Now, it would just be like, um, what if they have chosen the wrong type of people? Now, what happens to the development of the Bank Samoa? Now, it would be a failure. So, and also, in addition to that, what if the plebiscite that, that, that but what was conducted was a failure. Being, um, for the fact that in the first 
say that, they, that the arm is a failed experiment of the government and uh, not, to gen not generally speaking, but the, but the, but the arm government is, um, is a knowing that the, bank, that the arm government is a corrupt government, um, to think, to think critically, um, it's obviously, it is obvious that the, that the people will not, will not agree to the system, or will not to the system. So what if, but what if the time taken or the energy taken to conduct this deficit will only go to waste or would be a failure? What if this deficit would be a failure? What then a benefit the time and effort that was taken up to conduct this deficit? And that, that is why the government side, um, agrees to the fact that there should no longer be a deficit conducted to, but there will, will then automatically be a part of the Bank Samoa government. And also going back to my mechanics, I said earlier that the central government will be the one to scrutinize the right kind of people um, basing, upon their, basing upon their years of services, basing upon the services they have catered to the ARB, basing, basing on the services they have given the ARB or, or the development that they have given the ARB. So, um, I, I want to, to summarize what I have been saying for the past few minutes, is that a deficit is no longer required because in the very first place, uh, the arm being a failure, we all know that the people would really say no. So why is there a need to conduct this deficit? Why is there a need to conduct this deficit when in the first place we know that the people would disagree, would, dis, would disagree to, um, would, would disagree to the fact now to disagree with that? And with that, the government side the government side is proud to propose. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me first I want to apologize to you how pessimistic the government side has been in their in, in presenting to us the debate for this evening. Sure. Yeah. Because opposition side in this debate is really simple, Mr. Chair. We, the, the opposition side understands the goals of the Bank Samara government and we don't want to deprive the system of portraying its role as a secular government where basic rights of all will be protected. And what do we mean by these basic rights, Mr. Chair? This includes the right to suffrage, the right to security, and the right to, to enjoy peace at that, Mr. Chair. And in, in our paradigm, let me just tell you that we also are pro um, respecting the the cultural diversity that, it, that is existing in 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 Mindanao, Mr. Chair. But before I if, before I proceed to building our case, let me first rebut the previous speaker coming from the government side. They kept on talking to us about the time, about about, about how um, wasteful it is to to consume time and effort just for the plebiscite to be conducted. However, Mr. Chair, we, we concede to the fact that it takes time to conduct this plebiscite. However, we think that this plebiscite matters because at the end of the day, this plebiscite will allow the legitimacy of, of, of the Bank Samara, Mr. Chair. Next is that they kept on talking to us that, that what, what, if, what if people will not vote, will, will not go for um, the Bank Samara. But however, here in the paradigm of the opposition side, we think that it's important to, to look at the positive side. We think that it is important to take the, to um, go outside of the box, that even though the arm was a field experiment, it doesn't mean that the box tomorrow will also be a field experiment at that institute. Yeah. And and this 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 kind of rebuttal will be will further be um elaborated later in when I present to you the burden. The, the true burden in this case, Mr. Chair. Next is that um, the, the burden in this motion is really, number one, what is the importance of conducting a plebiscite, which clearly the government said does not comprehend. They kept on telling us that, that they, they, do not want, uh, they do not want to deprive people of democracy. However, if you want democracy, why will you, deprive, why will you diminish the plebiscite? in the first place. Mr. Chair, um, the, the plebiscite is a vote by which the people of the region express, express their opinion for or against an important proposal. And this plebiscite, Mr. Chair, here in the opposition side, we believe that this is one of the three pillars of direct democracy. This, this pleb, in, in, in the place of those people, when, when they are given the chance to vote in this kind of, in this plebiscite, 
they are also giving the government the permission so that they will be part of, of, of the Bangsamoro government, for example. And here, here in this, in this, um, with with the presence of a plebiscite, we believe that they, they are given the right to choose. And and at the end of the day, the reason why, um, for example, a region is beca became part of the Bangsamoro is not just because they are part of the geographical location of the arm sure because we have to be we have to understand that some of the some cities uh, that, that are going to be part of the Bangsamoro are, are just you know they're, they're they they will they're just part of it because they, because of the geographical location without considering the the cultural um differences that are present in this kind of regions Mr. Chair. Yeah. Now, it, it is we think here in the opposition side that it is important to consult them first that it is important to listen to listen to them because we cannot deny the fact that culture really um that culture really influences decisions mr chair number two we think that it is also important to to really examine what it, what is at stake when we don't conduct a plebiscite mr chair of course the citizens right to democracy is violated because we 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 of course we know that the government was created for its people. Now, without the plebiscite, the, the citizens, um, the citizens' right to become part of the government is also diminished, Mr. Chair, because the the, the government is it's it's actually a one-sided decision, Mr. Chair. The, their paradigm tells us that the government should right, should automatically um consider these five provinces and three cities to become part of the Bank tomorrow without even asking for their consultation, Mr. Chair. Number, that's why um, we think that giving the people the option to choose is better since, you know, peace and order is also at stake here. And why is, why do we say this? Because if, if you put these um, regions, if you allow them to be automatically part of the Bank Samara without asking them, of course, what will happen in the future is that there will, there will exist um, rebellions or protests which um, harms the stakeholders of this debate, which um, which violates the right of the people to safety at that, Mr. Chair. Number three is that we we think that our paradigm is better because we, we think that the well-being of, of the stakeholders of this debate is best catered in our side compared to the side of, of the government side in which they they want the they want this five provinces and three cities to be automatically part of the Bank Samoro government. Now, how, 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 how will our counter-proposal be effective? We will stick to the plan of conducting a plebiscite, provided that, number one, the citizens know enough about the Bank Samoro government, and we will make the goals of the Bank Samoro government clear to them, which is, of course, the, the, the main reason why the Bank Samoro government is going to be established is because of peace. And next is that we will allow the people to ask so that everything will, everything will be clarified to them. And at the end of the day, they will cast their vote with the right discernment at that, Mr. Chair. And of course, the one who will facilitate this plebiscite is the central government so that they cannot argue that there, there, there will be a leakage to this plebiscite, Mr. Chair. Now, we be, here in the opposition side, we believe that the citizens' right is the top priority of the government. We, if we no longer conduct a plebiscite, there are a lot of there are a lot of rights that are going to be violated. At, they are going to be violated, and their paradigm's benefits will never will not outweigh what we will present here. Because sure. Mr. Because Mr. Chair, obviously, what we are thinking here is is to how to run a holistic government. We think of, we think of the good of everyone, and not just you know. Um, we, we, we want to cater the rights of the people. With this, I end my speech. Good, good afternoon to each and everyone, to the members of this house, the adjust, and again with everyone. Uh, before I start, let me first um, rebut what the opposition side has been telling a while back. I was actually was saying that uh, people will uh, believe that I dare not say I dare saying that Bangsamoro government is also a failed experiment. Actually, in the government side, we are not uh, we are not talk, 
we are not uh, saying that Bangsamoro government also will, uh, will also be a, a field experiment. In fact, we are saying that people may not, I might disagree on the new system that will be given to them. Here. The fact that the ARMM had already failed and people might, uh, might disagree in this and people may not, may, may not trust this new system. So, and we are also saying that we are not depriving uh, the, the democracy among the people. We are just, uh, we are concerning on the, de on the development that they will be facing if we are no longer going to conduct this visit and we are just going to automatically automatically uh, include them in the new government which is the Bangsamoro government. We are on to the future and not on what will happen to them if this visit will no longer be conducted. So, I'm also saying here that the opposition side doesn't actually understand what uh, the paradigm of the government is here. We are saying in the mechanics of our Prime Minister, we are saying that if ever, if ever, the, uh, the new system will fail, the new system is not relevant, we are going to conduct a plebiscite to ensure that we are going to conduct the plebiscite after if the new government will fail. We will actually conduct the plebiscite to hear out. We are still going to hear out the voice of the people. Um, and next is, yes, we are, uh, we are ju not just on the people that will be part of this, uh, of this new government. We are also on to the leaders that will be, uh, that will handle and take charge of this new government. That's why we, the government side, is actually proposing to actually let the central government scrutinize these people, segregate these people, to actually lead the new, uh, the new government, which is the Bangsamoro government. So, proceeding to my arguments, uh, I'm just going to expand the, the argument given by, by our Prime Minister. What if which uh, failure of the said plebiscite? What if people under the ARMM disagreed to be part of this new government, which is the Bangsamoro government? What if the fact that ARMM had already failed, what if people, uh, people will no longer trust, uh, have, been, have no trust, zero percent trust on the new government that will be given or uh, introduce them? So what will happen to uh, to the new government, to the new system, if people, if a uh, majority of the people disagreed to enter or to be included in this uh, new system? So we are, um, then it will just, uh, I think, we think that if we just conducted uh, this plebiscite, uh, people might just uh, disagree and people will, uh, no, People will have no trust in this leadership, in this new system. So, what will happen Before to the new proceed. system? What will happen to the development of this new system if we, uh, if we just, um, I mean, if we, if we find out that majority of the people will no longer, uh, no longer wants to in, be included in this, in this new system. system. Very, uh, that uh, with that. Let me proceed to my second argument. We, in the government proceed. side, want to continue the development of these people. Yeah. The fact that ARMM, even if you say that ARMM is already a failed experiment, we, we uh, still believe that there, there comes uh, the, the point that it still, it has, still has shown the development that was made throughout the years. So we, we in the government side just want them, these people, part of the RMM, to be part, to automatically be included in this new system, the Bangsamoro government, so that we will no longer be going back to square one. We will no longer go, be going back to back to zero, back to zero development. That is why we in the government side want 
these people to continue the development that has been shown in the, that will be shown in the new system. So to sum up, we in the government side wants to no longer wants to conduct this revisit because we believe that it will just be a waste of time and it will just be a waste of energy effort to be con conducted by the central government. That's why we in the government is proud to propose. Thank you. Mr. Chair, this, the motion this house will no longer conduct a visit in the arm, but we'll consider them automatically part of the bank somewhere and which the opposition side is trying to oppose in this particular debate, Mr. Chair. But before I go to my three levels of argument, I would first like to give my rebuttals to what the previous speaker has said. Firstly, Mr. Chair, um, he has stated that uh, they have stated about negative things about what what is going to happen or what are hap what is happening they are being too pessimistic mr chair they are not looking at the good the good the good ideas that are going to happen mr chair here, Anoth here. another idea another rebuttal is that arm is actually not a failed experiment which will be further elaborated by the opposition with but now going to my first argument um, um, we in the opposition side believe that that the government are actually jumping into assumptions such as um, Muslims in arm will actually favor the, favor the bank Samoa, which is actually not the choice. Now let's go to the question: Is the bank Samoa actually an Islamic region? The answer to that is no, Madam Mr. Chair. Yeah, therefore, there's a possibility that the Muslim in the ARMM are, are, will not favor the, the Bang Samoa. Yeah, the, the question why is present here is because they want Mindanao, they want Mindanao as an ancestral domain, Mr. Chair. Now, in this, in this argument, I am, the opposition side is pushing that the government is actually jumping to assumptions that uh, the people or the R or the ARMM will actually support the Bang Samoro. And the, that's how I will actually link it to my second argument. Um, we, believe, we, in the opposition, we in the opposition side actually believe that, uh, that ARM will be against Bang Samoro. But today, about in this argument, we are going to consider the stakeholders, Mr. Chair. First, because of because of biases in the human calculus, the Bangsamoro will first prioritize the ad the addressing of concerns who are actually uh, to people who are actually pro Bangsamoro compared to the Bangsamoro. For example, you, Mr. Chair, are actually. Then uh, you, you, Mr. Chair, are actually a con, uh, a con Bang Samoa, or you are actually not, not favoring the Bang Samoa, and I, on the other hand, favor Bang, Sa Bang Samoa. People or the government of the Bang Samoa, or the Bang Samoa will actually address to my needs compared to you, Mr. Chair, which, actually, which is actually a bad side, Mr. Chair. Going to my next, going to my next, or my second, our, we, we all know that ARM um, is for, uh, I mean the MNLF is actually for ARM and the MILF is actually for the Bank Samoa. Conducting, to, conducting a, a tradition, I mean, if, uh, um, uh, if we actually do not conduct a visit, certain things will happen. Like for example, um, the uh, like for example the MNLF and the MILF are, are, or the MNLF are going to be aggravated, aggravated, and will actually lead to further complications or conflicts, Mr. Chair. Um, 
for example, a region with more MNLF than MILF will actually, again, will actually lead to further conflicts such as war or what have you. Now, this will actually lead to my third and last argument, Mr. Chair. Now we are going to discuss about the, or we are actually going to discuss what the goals of Bob Samoro, and that is peace, Mr. Chair. In this particular, in this particular argument, we should actually respect diversity as that, for example, Mr. Chair, in a place, in a particular place where there are actually more MNLF than, uh, than MILF. We believe that this should actually not be included in the Bank Samoa, for example, um, MLF and lesser MLF, MILF, because this will actually um, interfere with the Bank Samoa because it will actually lead to more conflicts or what have you. Um, now I'm going to discuss the harms. If placed in Bank Samoa, it will actually aggra aggravate the MLF and the current situation. Like again, Mr. Mad Mr. Chair, um, again it will, will further it will further lead to conflicts since there there are more MLF and MLF and they are actually having a dispute be, with each other in the status quo, Mr. Chair. Um, another harm is that this will not comply to the goals of Bank Samoa and Peace Talks, wherein the goals of the Bank wherein the goal of the Bank Samoa is actually to have or to, to distribute peace in that particular region, Mr. Chair. Not only, and this is the benefit of, of actually not, not, of actually conducting a plebiscit. Not only does it cater happiness of or satisfaction to people, but it also promotes peace, which is actually a benefit at that. Now, Madam Chair, in my, uh, Mr. Chair, in my last minute, I'm actually going to challenge the government side to give tangible harms of conducting a plebiscit here, instead here. of jumping to assumptions and placing arm in Bank Samoa. And with that, I'm proud to oppose. So, I am here to crystallize and clarify everything about what our side is trying to tell you, what our government side is trying to propose in this debate. Here, we are telling that we will, con we will not anymore conduct the plebiscite because who would still want to stay in a government that it may be full of corruption and a failed experiment in the, sure. first place, in the first place? Who would want to suffer more under this ARNM government? Sure. Who would want to, to stay and um, prolong their stay under this ARNM government than to stay in a new system which is called the Bank Samora government that is for the peace, that is to have social justice, to have, to have, to have um, equality in the government or society. I guess all of us would want that, in, even in our own, own personal opinion. First, let me tell you, uh, or let me tell what the Prime Minister has been talking about. The pan, our Prime Minister has have been, have been talking about that we are not neglecting the democracy. We do not deny the fact, the fact of plebiscite yes. because we, we have said in, a, in the mechanics that we will still have the, the plebiscite after, after these stakeholders would be moved in the new government so that we would know if, if they would still want to stay in the new system which we personally know that they would because this Bansamora basic law just like what I've said has been, uh, has been created for, for the good of all. We are prioritizing the benefits of these stakeholders because we know that, the, that the, these stakeholders in the AI, under the AIMM government has been really thirsty, thirsty for justice because they want a new government that would um, cater their needs and that is the Bank Samoro government. So, for, so from what the opposition side has said, said um, Specifically, the leader of of opposition, they have said that that they are prioritizing the right to democracy. Let me ask the leader of opposition: Is that even democracy if you are under a government of corruption and under a government of yeah. experiment? 
Uh, where's democracy there? And that's why in our government side, we are proposing that we, we should not anymore conduct a plebiscite because it's obvious that people would want a new, uh, to be under a new government that would cater their needs in the best, in the best potential that the new government can give. And here, if we would conduct a plebiscite, it would be um, it would be a lot of money and a lot of time to be wasted. So why not instead use the money to be used in the plebiscite for the additional development or empowerment of the Bank Samoro government? Because if we will move the stakeholders from the ARM government to the Bank Samoro government and just use the money to improve the Bank Samoro government, the people would surely like the system there because the, gov the Bangsamora government would be empowered and developed in the full potential and that would cater and that would benefit them more compared to the ARMM government. Point so, now. So I, please sit down. So I don't think that we, that we should still conduct a plebiscite because um, first of all, we all know that um, it would be hard it would be hard for them, it would be hard for them to um, allot some time because Bangsamara government is still developing. So I think we would still, our government side or our, our side would still, would still um, think that the Bangsamara government would need some support so that we would know that the Bangsamara government would be in a huge success at the end. And the, our deputy leader, our, our deputy prime minister, have also said that we are not saying that Bangsamoro will be a failed experiment because just like what I just, just like what I have said, if the money for, for the plebiscite would be used for the additional empowerment and development of the Bangsamoro government, it would be in the best it would be in the best um, benefit of the stakeholders in this debate, specific, um, as um. To be specific, the people in under the ARMM to be under the Bangsamoro government, and that and if once they are in this Bangsamoro government, we, we can assure that this Bangsamoro government would be developed well because the money the money to be used in the plebiscite would be used for the development, just like what I've said. The deputy prime minister have also said that we are not depriving the rights because just like. Just like what the Prime Minister have said that we are still going to conduct the plebiscite when the people in the ARMM are there. Who knows if the people who knows if the people would like the Bangsamoro government better compared to the ARMM government in the present. And just just like what the Deputy Prime Minister have been talking about, that this would continue the development of the Bangsamoro. Because I have been talking about this Bangsamoro development from my whole speech that this Bangsamoro was created for the betterment of the future, especially those those places that would be under the Bangsamoro government in the first place. It was created so that um, people would uh, so that the Bangsamoro would have more power, more power or independence to to um, to 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 uh, manipulate, uh, not manipulate but um, to, to, handle, to handle their own place and so that there would be justice, justice, equality, and peace. And I would also like to ask or rebut what the deputy leader of opposition have said, that Bangsamoro will prioritize those pro-Bangsamoro. Let me ask you, how sure are you? Let me tell you that this Bangsamoro basic law was even created, just like what I've said, for social justice, equality, and peace. So I therefore think that this Bangsamoro government would would um would not discriminate other people because they are into the social equality of the people under it and they would want to cater the best needs of the people. So so uh, um summarizing what the government side has been talking about or proposing in this whole debate, we don't need to conduct or uh, conduct or give the plebiscite in the ARMM because we 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 already we are already saying that that people would want the new a new system because they are already tired of this corrupt government called the ARMM and and the and that the ARMM Shame. is already a failed a failed experiment just like what the president Benigno Aquino have already stated and thanks uh, let me tell you that we 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 
we must develop um we 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 let's give let's give the Bangsamora government a chance to develop so just use the money in the instead of using it for plebiscite so that the Bangsamoro government would develop and empower even more. And with that, I am proud to propose. Mr. Speaker, the government side has been, has been continuously telling us that the arm is a failed experiment and about corruption in the arm. But this is very blinding. Why? Because in the first place, arm was only a failed experiment according to Piloy or according to a committee selected yeah, for yeah. only a group of people. So yeah. therefore, it is not necessarily a failed experiment. How do you say when something is a failed experiment? When it has produced no benefit at all. And we believe that arm has produced benefits. They have also made mention of corruption, corruption, corruption. But that is not corruption. Let me tell you, Mr. Ch Speaker, that long ago there was no corruption. Long ago, corruption is only a means of acquiring money, of okay. enriching yourself, yeah, yeah. until it impoverishes a group of people. So therefore, there is no corruption until someone challenges corruption and turns it as corruption. It is only a form of business and therefore it, is a, and it somehow benefits the whole economy. So, Mr. Speaker, we, we believe that the plebiscite oh, it takes time. Yes, it does. It is an accepted fact and therefore it should really take time. Why should it take time? To be able to further push the goals of the Bank Samoa to accommodate yeah. peace, to be able to cater everyone at the end of the day and therefore Bank Samoa will and therefore the plebiscite will not fail because it is the government's duty to assure that it is a success. We are actually taking risks to promote the to promote the to promote the good of everyone at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, the, op the government side has been continuously telling us that, that, that has been continuously telling us that uh, the arm is a corrupt government and its people are tired of it. But yeah. that's not the case in the first place. Arm was a good government. Why was it a good government? Because its people did not like to okay. um, overthrow it, but it was the government itself who abolished it. Rather, arm was yeah. somehow a success because its people were actually we're actually, uh, we're actually like complying to it. So the government side is ba is mainly dwelling on the negative side. So the, the government side has been telling us that, that there is social justice and what have you, but we believe that there is no social justice in their case because it deprives them of their suffrage. Yes, ma'am. If you're saying that ARM is a good or has a good government, why would they create the Bank Samoa in the very first place? Why did they create the Bank Samora in the very first place? Because they think that ARM is a failed government and we believe it is not a failed government. Shay! So, so we are actually considering here the benefits of its stakeholders. Now, now let me move on to what my, partner, my partners have said. So here in our side, we are, vet, we are catering suffrage. We are actually promoting the value of suffrage. And why should we... And why should we value suffrage? Let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, that if suffrage was not was not catered, then it somehow deprives them of justice. And it deprives them of justice since there is this Geneva Convention on Human Rights, then our products might probably be boycotted and there would be more problems for the for the for the country at the end of the day, which we are trying to avoid. We are only trying to well, to accommodate the plebiscite to, to avoid further harms and to further and to further push through the, the suffrage of its people. So what we are trying to do here is, um, they, they, they are, I have preempted, uh, my partners have preempted and I've said already that the government side well, um, are believing that the, are believing that they should, that the, the, the bank, some, that arm should automatically be in the bank some more, but this is prejudice. Why is it prejudice? Because Right, because it, it is prejudice because Islam, the, the, the people in arm will not actually favor the Bang Samoro. So the people in arm will favor the Bang Samoro, but that is not the case. Arm will actually be against the Bang Samoro, but that is not because of corruption, because of only clashing ideologies between the MNLF and the MILF. MNLF is for arm and MILF is for the Bang Samoro. So we believe that we better cater peace here because if we conduct a plebiscite, let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, there is this particular place where there are a lot of MNLF and there are um, 3% or 2% MILF. So if we conduct a plebiscite and we did not place them in the Bang Samoro, then there would be no conflict. We actually promoted peace because instead of 
because instead of promoting more because instead of upholding war by making them uh, by putting them in the bank tomorrow which will for, which will, which can probably or further aggravate the tension in Mindanao we are actually trying to resolve these conflicts which are the goals of bank tomorrow here so my previous partner my, my partners already said that they should give tangible harms but they cannot even give us tangible harms why cannot they give us tangible harms because the benefits we have in our paradigm outweighs the benefits in theirs in theirs they are only giving us well they, they are giving us more problems and harms so what so but um so we we on the opposition side we are be, due to the value of suffrage we are catering the satisfaction of our people which is very necessary to provide a sustainable environment Shame. or to provide a sustainable government let me tell you that being sustainable is very necessary for governance to succeed and that with that we should we should surely identify that there is satisfaction between the people because if, let me tell you that even only one percent of the people are not satisfied or even less than one percent they could further pro they can promote their ideology and tell others to do this do that and then probably in the near future 99 percent will be in theirs and that will cause further tension so we should always consider the satisfaction of its people uh, we should further consider the satisfaction of its people and besides we we should not uh, put them in the plebiscite why for example there is this particular um for example particular province for example isabella city or cotabato who did not favor who did not favor arm in the first in when arm was created so let me tell you that that for example there, there that there is another for example isabel or cotabato city which according to the framework agreement on the bank tomorrow they will be added to the they will be added to bank tomorrow but let me tell you that probably if they do not want to be in the bank tomorrow then we should cater to it why should we cater to it for example no one wants to be in the bank tomorrow then we should cater it no one wants to be the to the to accommodate the bank tomorrow fine but what we will do is we will provide a better solution we will go to the people and ask for further alternatives which will cater their satisfaction which will further solve the conflicts at that and that is why we believe that our paradigm is better because we are actually doing what is the goal of the bank tomorrow to promote peace at the end of the day and with that since we are promoting peace uh, at the end of the day we are only complying to what is bank tomorrow and to its goals and with that we believe that the, go the, the opposition side wins this debate because the government side did not cater to the value of suffrage to the value of the bank tomorrow which is peace the ladies and gentlemen the reply speech coming from the opposition side is going to be very simple Number one, I will tell you our responses to what the, what the government side presented to us. Number two, I will tell you how unresponsive they became to, to our case. Or maybe they responded, but their responses were shallow to the extent that their responses did not outweigh our Same. justification, Mr. Chair. And third, I will tell you why we should win this debate because our paradigm is better than theirs. Now they, they kept on telling us that what what if what if it's going to be a failure? What if there that there will be no people who, who are going to agree with the bank tomorrow? So I I think that our paradigm is better because at least Mr. Chair, in here in the opposition side, we address the idea that the people of our will still go for Bank Samoro. It's just that not everyone in not all of the people in the arm are going to go for for the bank tomorrow at that decision however they, they 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 became so pessimistic in their arguments telling us that what is no almost um no one will will agree to the bank tomorrow which we think is not really a powerful argument uh, mr chair next is that um they, they kept on telling us that it will that conducting a plebiscite will be hard will be hassle and all of those things however we think that of course it of course, um, it is the, the job of the government to extend its efforts to conduct this plebiscite. So, that's why in our yeah. counter proposal we presented that we, we will make, we will allow the citizens to understand the goals of the Bank Samoro government so that at the end of the day they will cast a vote with, with right discernment, Mr. Chair. Also, they told us that um, instead of all allotting money for a plebiscite, why not use this money for the development of the Bank Samoa and all of those things? However, Mr. Chair, we believe that the government has has me mechanism in allotting a budget, Mr. Chair. So th that argument is also not not very strong in this debate since 
we believe that the, the, the money that we are going to use in, in conducting this plebiscite is not go, will, will not go to waste at the end of the day. This plebiscite is going to legitimize the, is going to legitimize the Bangsa Mawa at the end of at the end of the day. Now they they failed to they failed to to tell us why their proposal is better. Well, in our proposal, we presented you com concrete means on how to, you know, on how this this plebiscite is going to benefit the 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 people. Um, it, no, why why will our paradigm outweigh their paradigm? That is very that is a very um simple question, Mr. Chair, because it is. It is so obvious that in our paradigm, the coalition of the authority and its constituents is is really evident because we we do not just cater the the supremacy of the government, but we also cater what we also cater why we have to um, listen to the constituents. Next is that our side gives priority to the people's rights and their happiness, as what my partners have elaborated. And the next next is that by conducting a plebiscite, we do not hamper the goals of the Bangsamoro government, which is peace. Because if if um, if there will be people who who will um not who who are who go against the Bangsamoro, but they became automatically part of it, then obviously this will result to conflict. This will create more problems in, in Mindanao, at, uh, Mr. Chair. And they, they, the uh, government whip kept on telling us that their paradigm promotes justice, equality, and peace. But then, Mr. Chair, how 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 will they promote justice and equality if, if they don't even um, give priority to everyone? They 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 only um, think about the how the government um, needs to do their job and all of those things. And peace, Mr. Chair, it is so obvious that our paradigm is the one who is catering peace because we 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 foresee that 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 conflicts are possible when when um when a plebiscite will will not be conducted. With this, I believe that yeah. we will win this debate. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, coming from the opposition side, we keep on denying that the arm is a failed experiment, which in the very first place, it is really a failed experiment, Mr. Chair. That is why yeah. the Bangsa Mero is the Bangsa Mero is trying to be implemented, Mr. Chair. And coming from the opposition group, that he said it is only coming from the president that the arm is a failed experiment. No, you yourself, coming from looking into the situation of the arm itself, Mr. Chair, it actually tells us that it is really a failed experiment, and yeah. you cannot deny that fact. But what the group of the opposition side has, tried, has, been, has, tried, has been trying to tell us that, it, that the arm has a good government. And also to clash that idea, how can you say that the arm is, has a good government when in the very first place the arm, the, the government of the arm itself is a corrupt government? That is why the Bank Samara is created in the very first place. So we, we keep on denying on that fact, Mr. Chair, which in the very first place is already a fact and is no longer deniable. And also to clarify, and also to answer the challenge given by the DLO, sites, harms, of, of conducting a plebiscite. The entire government side has given you concrete and possible ideas of the harms of conducting a plebiscite. One is, it, it may be, oh, no, not maybe, it, it will be a waste of time and money research because obviously that the army is a corrupt government. People will, will, all people will already, people are, will already agree moving into the bank Mara researcher because of the suffrage that they have been experiencing in the art. And also about the whole suffrage thing, they, they, they mentioned to us that if we conduct this service, that if we conduct the premise, people do we take up the suffrage of people. But if you conduct this place, what you're trying to do is you're trying to extend the suffrage of these people. People are suffering on the arm right now and that is why we are trying to we are we are creating the dance. So, uh, if you conduct a plebiscite which takes up so much time coming from the opposition side, yes, we agree to the fact that conducting a plebiscite takes time and energy, takes a long time, uh, takes a long time process. So what we're trying to say is that we will be extending the submission to people because first of all, yet again the arm is a third experiment. And also coming from the coming from the um, coming from the opposition side that um uh, they they had they had been um, they had been telling us that also in relation that they played this 
the long process. They keep on telling us the government side has been pessimistic all throughout this debate. But what the government side is actually trying to do is we are trying to think of alternatives or what will be the harm if we conduct these services. One is if it, it will be a waste of time and money, it will be a waste of energy, and why and that is, and that's what the government whip has told you. Why not use the funds of why not use the funds of these services? Why not use the funds to, to cater the development of the Bank Zamora? They keep on telling us that the government is pessimistic, but, but in the very first but in the very first phase, the government is just trying to give you concrete or concrete alternatives on what will be the harms of conducting a deficit. We are not going to deprive the democracy of the people, but we are just trying to we are, we are just concerned on the development of the rates among the people of the Mississippi. So let's just say that yes, we conduct this deficit. We let the people vote, we let the people say what they want to say. But what if, Mr. Chair, what if it is very possible? What if, what if the people and you cannot deny what if, what if you choose the wrong type of people to live at Bang Zamora, Mr. Chair? What if the people have failed to choose? What if the people have failed to choose the right the right government for the Bang Zamora? So what they're trying what they're trying to do is that they're just trying to put the situation of harm on the Bang Zamora. That is why we do not agree to we do we deny the fact of having a deficit, but if Mr. Chair coming from the mechanics of the government side, if that system fails, that is now the time that we will be hearing the voice of the people. That is now the time that we will be conducting a deficit. Now, to give, um, um, to, to sum it all up, we be, I believe that the government side has a certain debate, and I believe that the government side will win this debate because the government has provided strong arguments, strong yeah, ideas yeah, all yeah. about this debate. Yeah. And with that, I believe that the government side will win this debate. We congratulate the grand finalists in the first debate competition at the Be My Voice Foundation Incorporated. And thank you for the round of applause the house.